Buenas noches, ¿cómo andan? Bienvenidos a otro vivo de Ultimate Argentina. Y esta noche, la verdad que un invitado bastante esperado, digamos, eh, nos acompañó en muchas, muchas tardes acá de cuando éramos chicos. Así que bueno, esta noche lo vamos a tener al señor Greg Evigan. Eh, bueno, muchos lo conocemos por, por BJ McCain, pero bueno, hizo varios trabajos, tiene una, una larga carrera musical también, así que bueno, hoy vamos a estar charlando de esto durante la noche, ¿sí? Bueno, buenas noches Daniel, eh, bueno, <ríe> amigo Víctor, así, este programa dedicado para vos, amigo, los chicos de Ochentoy, que el jueves pasado tuvimos un especial de Carlitos, Carlos, bienvenido, eh, José Rosario, bueno, bueno, gracias por estar, como todos los jueves, José Joffre, bienvenido nuevamente, Roba, saludos, Así que bueno, vale, <ríe> vale, ¿cómo andás? ¿Bien? Eh, estamos todos hoy, me parece. Va a, estar, va a estar concurrida la noche, la fiesta. Así que bueno, vamos a darle la... Es Nacho, ¿cómo va? Así que bueno, vamos a darle a ver a quién tenemos también que nos puede acompañar esta noche. ¡Oh! <ríe> ¿Cómo le va, ¿Todo bien? ¿Todo bien? ¿Todo bien? ¿Vos? Me alegro muchísimo. Sí, sí. Chu, chu, chu de la vida. ¿Qué les pueden decir? Eh... Mire, como me gusta decirlo, y ya creo que se los comenté a ustedes, eh, el personaje que hacía Greg eh, haciendo de BJ con su camión, con su mono, eh, fue en nuestro primer ídolo para mí, porque antes de que llegara el Auto Fantástico, antes de llegar a los duques de Hazard, claro. eh, estaba BJ y era el que todos queríamos ser, o sea, el, el mismo estilo de serie que todas las otras, yendo en ciudad en ciudad, ayudando a otras personas, mm. pero... Bueno, lo bueno de, de Greg es que no solo es BJ. Acá en Argentina mucho no se vio de la carrera de él, pero tiene una carrera enorme, no solamente sí, 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 sí. como actor, sino también como músico. Así que vamos a hablar un poquito con él de, de todo esto. Así que bueno, ¿te parece que le damos la bienvenida a los otros de los chicos? Así no, no vamos, 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 porque amigo. tenemos una hora, una hora y minutos hoy, así que vamos a hacerlo todo rápido, así para buscar todas las, las preguntas que podamos. ¿Quién viene? ¡Oh, mirá! <ríe> qué, ¡Qué sorpresa! No ¿Cómo le va el número uno? ¿Todo bien? Venía pisteando como un campeón hace un rato para llegar, así que acá estamos. ¿Cómo andan, amigos? Muy bien, un placer. Un placer. ¿Todo bien? Bien, bien, bien. Resurgiendo como el gato Félix de las cenizas, decía uno. Es verdad, hace como tres semanas no te vemos. Gracias por, sí, sí. por venir. ¿Venías en un camión sí, sí. rojo a fondo, por casualidad? Venía. Venía así, a pleno. Bueno, ¿Vamos a darle la entrada a los otros chicos? Dale. Así. Vamos, vamos. Eh, me estamos, me estamos. Corte, pero bueno, estamos con el tiempo cortito. Hoy. Tiempo contado, sí, sí. Hoy tenemos que sacar el jugo. Hey, guachos, ¿todo bien? ¿Dónde está el mono? ¿Dónde está el...? ¿Dónde está el mono? Digan. <risa> where is, vamos, vamos a ver si hay controversia con ese tema, como, como se dijo muchas veces. ¿eh? Hoy nos lo va a contar. Sí. No, un segundo, un segundo. Ay. Ahí está. Esto es televisión en vivo. Televisión en vivo. Esto es televisión en vivo. Sí, como tenemos una hora, vamos a darle le, le, al toque, pero que la gente vaya dejando sus preguntas. Sí, 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 sí. Eh, así aprovechamos y no preguntamos tanto nosotros, más que nada porque tenemos poco tiempo. Así que, Dale. obviamente vamos a preguntar alguna que otra cosa, pero si puede la gente que empieza a meter preguntas. Exacto. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Yo tengo un saludito después, así que bueno, nada. Buenísimo. ¿Para <risa> nosotros o, o para...? No, de parte de acá de uno de los chicos de, del grupo de WhatsApp que pidió un saludo de parte de, de Greg. Especial. Dale, dale. Claro. Así que bueno, Excelente. cuando quieran. Cuando quieran ya estamos. Bueno, señores y señores, nos damos más vueltas. Eh, nuestro ídolo de la juventud aparece y se van a sorprender cuando lo vean lo bien que está este hombre. Con nosotros esta noche, el señor Greg Evigan. ¡Bravo! ¡Bienvenido! ¡Bienvenido! 
How are you, Greg? Thank you very much Good. for joining us tonight. Gracias por, por juntarte con nosotros esta noche. Uh, what we were saying there, I don't know if you got some of the Spanish, but you look absolutely amazing. El, oh, el, thank el, you. Muchas so gracias. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bienvenido a la Argentina, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, so, Greg, we know that we have not a lot of time, so we are going to just dive in in the questions, if you, if you don't mind. Uh, oh, so yeah, absolutely. Así que, nos largamos yeah. en, la, en la película, en la, con la entrevista. Um, no sé si sabés, pero bueno, sos amado en la Argentina con locura. Creo que te lo dije en el backstage. Fuiste el primer ídolo de toda nuestra generación. Eh, pero bueno, todo, todas las personas tienen un principio y siempre nos gusta saber cómo, cómo, cómo empieza antes de llegar a eso. Cómo empezaste o cómo empezó tu carrera. So, Greg, um, I don't know if you know, but you're absolutely loved down here. Uh, you were our first idol for our generation. That's great. Uh, you you probably will see all of the all of the comments in there, but um, this is something we'll we always like to start with. How were your beginnings? How how do you start? How do you become an actor, a musician? How were your your beginnings in in this world? Well, um, I tell you, I I first be I got interested. I got in the bands first when I was in high school. I had uh, I had a whole you know I had four different uh, rock you know rock bands that I was in in high school. So I I. I always had that dream of, uh, for music and you know, music was always a thing for me, singing, you know, writing and performing. I played keyboards, you know, I still, I play piano, but I played keyboards. So that's how I, that's how I started by, by doing those shows, you know, I mean, not shows, but doing those bands, having those bands. And that gave me the, you know, the performance. I got out there and started doing the, you know, that gave me the chance to perform. And then I kind of integrated it with, um, Uh, with some plays I did in, in high school and that kind of thing. But then I'll tell you, and I know you got to translate this, but, um, but when I got out of high school, when I graduated high school, I, uh, I went and I auditioned for Jesus Christ Superstar in New York. So I was on the road in a bus and truck tour three months after I graduated high school in the original uh, Jesus Christ Superstar on uh, the road tour. And then I did it for another year on Broadway. So that was my beginnings, you know. And that was the beginnings. Okay, I'll translate that. Good luck. Uh, wow. Good luck translate. <laughs> oh, no, no worries. But you know what I do is I take bullet points in a notepad so I don't forget anything. And I'll translate okay, it absolutely every single word. Uh, right. Bueno, lo que nos comentó, dice, para, ah, cuando empezó, eh, empezó cuando estaba en la secundaria. Tuvo cuatro bandas de rock diferentes, así que siempre soñó con lo que es música. Cantando, escribiendo, tocando el, play, el piano, el teclado. Y dice, esos fueron sus, sus comienzos, uh, uh, tocando en bandas. Así empezó con el tema de lo que es la interpretación. Y empezó a, obviamente, a actuar, ¿no? Eh, empezó, hizo un par de actos también en la secundaria, pero bueno, todo empezó apenas terminó la secundaria. Los tres meses audicionó para la obra de Jesucristo Superestrella, que acá fue muy, muy conocida también. Y dice, tres meses después ya estaba en, en el tour, en la, en la ruta, haciendo... Jesucristo Superestrella, y después un año más en, en Nueva York haciendo la obra en vivo. Así que esos fueron sus comienzos. O sea, del secundario arrancó enseguida. En, empezó como Jesús, de una. Ahí, arrancó <laughs> arriba, arriba. <laughs> arriba, yeah, you started on top right there. Ok, continue. It was, continue. Great, it was a great start, you know. Uh, it was a really, it was a great start. And, and I was, you know, I was 17 years old, so I graduated a little, a little younger because of You know, because my birthday, um, you know, it land, you know, sometimes you land on the later part of the year or the other. So I was on the early part. And then uh, and then right right from there, I got I did that for a year on the on the road. We went all around the U.S. And then uh, and the furthest we went was Hawaii, which was great. And uh, then we then I did it. the conductor that I had that, that conducted our show because it was an orchestral rock band orchestral thing, you know. So, um, so he, he liked me and he liked, like, there was a dozen, I'd say probably half a dozen others that he brought to Broadway with him, you know? So we went back and then I did it on Broadway for another year, you know? So that was two years of that show. Bueno, ahí, ahí lo comentó más bien, no, tiró, tiró más detalles. Eh, dice, fue un gran comienzo, sí, totalmente. Tenía 17 años, eh, dice, me gradué de bastante joven. 
por el tema de la fecha de nacimiento, que puedes graduarte los 17 o los 18, depende del año donde naciste. Eh, y dice, bueno, ahí lo hice totalmente durante un año en toda la ruta en Estados Unidos, en diferentes ciudades. Empezamos en Hawái, fantástico. Y dice el conductor de la orquesta, porque bueno, Jesucristo Superestrella es un musical en vivo que tiene orquesta y banda tocando. Dice, le cae muy bien. Eh, y bueno, ah, básicamente hicieron un año más en Broadway, así que hizo dos años el, el papel del personaje en Jesucristo Superestrella. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, uh, what happened was, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but do you remember Don Kirshner? Uh, Don Kirshner's rock concert in those days? Mm, he had, el, Don Kirshner, ¿lo conocen uh, ustedes? He had the yeah. monkeys, he had the monkeys, he had Carol King, he had all these incredible writers. He was, he was one of the biggest, um, he was one of the biggest, uh, Uh, record, you know, producers and uh, uh, around at the time, and and he, him, and uh, Norman Lear, and uh, and a guy by the name of Neil Bogart who had Casablanca Records, uh, they all did the the show because I I decided oh I I decided that I have to backtrack a little bit, uh, so after Superstar was Greece I did Greece on Broadway right after that for for another. I'd say probably another a little over a year, and then uh, and then it's when I got after that is when I got with uh, Don Kirshner and Norman Lear and Neil Bogart and Paul Schaefer and I who you know from David Letterman, uh, uh, Paul Schaefer and I did the show, uh, you know did the show called A Year at the Top, and that was the first show that was the first thing that was the thing that brought me to California. Yeah. Ok, bueno, voy, voy a explicarme. Me contó una parte y después fuimos un poquito más para atrás, así que voy a empezar en el orden cronológico. Eh, después de hacer, eh, después de hacer eh, eh, Jesucristo Superestrella, también se enganchó en otra obra de Broadway, también súper conocida, Grease, eh, Vaselina, la película de, de, de John Travolta, también la hizo durante un año en, en Broadway. Y dice, bueno, que ahí se metió justamente con el, con el productor que nos estaba comentando, que manejaba a Carol King, a los Monkeys. Eh, que era un pro productor de discos, él, Norman Lear y Neil Bogart, que es el, el dueño de Casa Blanca Records. Eh, bueno, ahí se conocieron justamente con Paul Schaefer, hicieron todo un trabajo y eso fue lo que lo llevó. Paul Schaefer, para los que no saben, es el tecladista que estaba en el programa de David Letterman, el de las entrevistas, era el, el músico que estaba al costado, que le, le conducía toda la música un tipo pelado. Bueno, grabó un disco con Greg, Paul Schaefer, y eso dice que fue lo que lo llevó para, eh, para California desde, desde New York. So Paul yeah. Schaefer was the one that took you to, to California. Is that, is that correct? No, it was really Don Kirshner. Don Kirshner was the one that took me to California. Paul Schaefer was already cast for the show, you know? And uh, in fact, the show was completely cast. That's a whole long story on how that happened. But, um, you know, I was, I was kind of cast for the show already. And then I didn't get the part. And then I went back and I got, uh, and, and then I, Well, I, I don't want to tell you this long story because then you have to translate it. But uh, but then I got stuck. Uh, luckily, okay, the guy that remember Jay Siegel, the guy that sang. Uh, yeah, absolutely. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. You know that guy, right? So he wrote. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not carried away. Yeah. So so Jay, I went to see this. Um, I went to see this. Uh, my girlfriend. I was waiting for her to get to be done with. Um, this show she was in called musical chairs that they were producing. Kirsten was producing. It never made it, but it was called musical chairs. And, uh, I was waiting and all of a sudden I looked down, I see, uh, this guy, Don Kirshner, who I knew he didn't, you know, he kept looking at me. Right. And he's like, he was like, uh, Hey babe, 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 don't I know you? Babe, come, come, come here. So, so I come over, you know, finally I come over, he goes, babe, you know, I'm doing this show. You're, you're an actor or something, right? I've seen you before. I'm like, yeah, you saw me because I went through a whole summer of interviews with you, you know, and uh, and so I it was up to me and another guy. And and so Jay Siegel comes up to me and says, Jay goes, Greg, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Let me, let me, let me talk to Donnie. I'll talk to him. I'm going to talk to him. And so uh, so he comes back, you know, he, he says, can I get you now? Let me, let me call. I'm going to call you. I mean, I, we're doing the show. We lost the guy. The guy fell out. But I'll call you. I'm going to call you. And I'm like, yeah, right. Okay, you're gonna call me. Okay, so I heard that before, you know. So uh, sure enough, he calls me the next day, and I'm on a plane going to New York, going to California rather, to meet Norman Lear, and uh, and and be cast in this thing. And and then uh, I, I literally had two lines. I said two lines. They said, and and he, 
Donnie Kirsten looks at Norman Leary, says, he says, uh, so what do you think? What do you think, Norm? You think, what do you think? Okay. And Norman Lear goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And I'm like, okay, you're in. And that was it. <laughs> then we went and shot like, that was like three, three years of my life after that, just doing that show, you know? So that was the beginning. So we're, we're, we're talking about um, Good Heavens, right? No, no, no. A year at the top. A oh, year at the top. top. Oh, there you go. Okay. No, I think That's you started with good. Good. Uh, yeah. All right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Let now, me just try to I know what you're talking about. That show, that show, that was one, that was a one off thing. That was one off. Good. Oh, yeah. one off. Okay. Got it. A year at the one top, off. we did, you know, a bunch of episodes and everything. You know? Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. Bueno, la forma de no, no está contando es buenísima. De Don Kirchner fue el que básicamente lo llevó a California. Eh, bueno, lo habían tomado, de ese, bueno, después perdí la parte. Eh, lo, la cosa es, bueno, Jay Seagull, que es el que canta la canción que estuvimos cantando ahí a capela, sí. <ríe> lo fue a ver un show y estaba esperando que terminara y dice que lo vea a Don Kirchner. Eh, que no paraba de mirarlo y dice, bueno, con una forma que decía él, hey, 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 te conozco, te conozco a algún lado, vos sos actor o algo, ¿no? Y le dice, te vi haciendo algo, ¿no? Y, y Greg le dice, claro que sí, me viste todo el verano tratando de conseguir trabajo para vos eh, en todo momento. <risa> y le dice, para, 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 me interesa que trabajemos juntos. Y bueno, y se le acerca el, el, la persona con también trabajaba en, con, uh, ¿cómo era? Eh, Lear. Eh, Norman. Norman, Norman Lear. Lear, thank you. Norman Lear se le acerca y le dice, no, no, para, para, déjame que yo voy a hablar con él, yo voy a hablar con él, vamos a ver si arreglamos algo. Y dice, para, 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 yo te voy a llamar, yo te voy a llamar. Y Greg dice, bueno, sí, ya me vas a llamar. La, la muy conocida de Hollywood, sí, me vas a llamar, te lo creo. Eh, no lo no creí, dice, bueno, ya lo escuché mucho. Me... Right. <ríe> y dice, al otro día estoy en un avión para irse para Nueva York y dice que, bueno, lo llama por teléfono y le dice, bueno, vamos a leer un par de líneas, era una cosa muy sencillita, muy cortita. Y dice, bueno, le ah, sí, sí, vamos a ver, Norman, sí, 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 ok, ok, listo, listo, listo ya está, firmamos ya. Tres años de su vida haciendo Year at the Top, <ríe> básicamente, así yeah. que ese fue su, su, su comienzo. <ríe> yeah, yeah, it was, it was a good, you know, it was a big time for me, that was it, I was, you know, going to California, you know. Eh, eh, una muy buena época para él, yendo para, para California. Bueno, yeah. de ahí, eh, eh, si no me equivoco... Eh, bueno, yo lo tenía mal, tenía como que había empezado en Good Heavens, pero Good Heavens fue un, un solamente un pequeño, uh, eh, una pequeña participación, una pequeña, parte, sí, una pequeña participación, eh, pero me parece, si no me equivoco, después en una serie grande lo primero fue El Hombre Nuclear, así que si les parece bien le voy a preguntar de eso, si no les molesta acá Dale. otra pregunta, perdón, sí, chicos, estoy haciendo un monólogo yo. So Greg, uh, I, I don't know if, if this is correct, but after that, I mean, I think, if I'm not crazy for the research that we did, your first, like, your first uh, acting in, in a big major TV show is Final Crazy was at the $6 million dollar man show, right? Okay, so that was, uh, that, it was sick, it was called The Bionic Boy. Yeah. Oh, so okay. it wasn't the, the Bionic Man with uh, Steve Austin. No, it, was it, was, it was a spinoff. It was a spinoff of, of, of oh. and it was uh, a guy, remember Vince Van Patten? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great tennis player too, by the way. Uh, so Vince, uh, Vince, it was the, uh, it was his show. He was the Bionic Boy, and I played his rival, like I was the Bionic Boy's rival on it. You know, of course, I didn't have a chance against the Bionics. You know, <laughs> right? But uh, that's the little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Farrah Fawcett was around then. Uh, I think, uh, and uh, uh, I remember uh, Lee Majors. You know, Lee Majors was. I think he did a. A part in it because he was the you know he was the bionic man so it was a it was a spin-off of the bionic man you know six million dollar man oh ah, yeah. okay okay yeah. Eh, bueno sí, lo, lo que pregunté era, justamente era un spin-off que estaban haciendo de la serie del hombre nuclear eh, en realidad yeah. no era el hombre nuclear era el pibe nuclear estuvo también con Lee Majors y con Farrah Fawcett en, en el show pero él era Vince Van Patten I don't think, I don't think, uh, I don't think Farrah Fawcett was in it I think she was just visiting the set for some reason mm -hmm. uh, uh, para Fawcett estaba de visita. Apareció ahí. Es increíble, si estoy tomando un mate y aparece para Fawcett, ¿no? Tremendo, qué vida. Me hace borrar a la salida donde montaba Giovanna Cassidy. Cuando nos dijo, sí, estaba ahí, me vino a ayudar Steve McQueen. No sé si recuerda. Como si nada, lo dicen como si nosotros nos cruzáramos. Como si yo fuera a la casa de Pelu, así nomás. 
Yeah. <laughs> Joanna, actually, Joanna Cassidy, we'll talk about her soon. You work with her. Uh, she actually yeah. told us a story that, like you just mentioned, yeah, Farrah Fawcett was there. And she told us a story about meeting Steve McQueen. And she, her, her car broke and Steve McQueen <laughs> came to it. And I was like, oh, my God, these people. <laughs> That's the thing. You never know when Steve McQueen's going to be around, you know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Need a tire right. iron? Yeah, here's Steve McQueen. Yeah. <laughs> Eh, Gus, eh, sí. me gustaría preguntarle, digamos, eh, él trabajó en la película de Ringo, ¿no? Digamos, eh, Ringo. ¿qué, experiencia, ¿qué experiencia obtuvo? Digamos, qué, ¿Cómo la pasó? Qué, ¿Qué nos puede contar acerca? Well, your Spanish is pretty good, uh, Greg. Yes. Uh, I can understand working... a little more than I can, more than I can uh, speak, but I can, I, can, I can understand something. So you're talking about the Ringo special? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. If you could tell yeah, us was, something about uh, that. Yeah, that was a great experience. I mean, that was just to meet Ringo, obviously. Come on, you know, right? And uh, the funny thing is I just did this thing where I was working, you know, one of those uh, signing show, you know, where people come meet and greet and everything. And I was and, – and, and Pete Best was there. Hmm. You, know, you know, Pete Best, he was the original – Ringo replaced him, you know? Yeah, yeah, the original drummer. Yeah, so he – you know, he was there, you know. And uh, so I showed Pete the footage from <laughs> – You don't feel bad, right, Pete? No, he says, "No, I'm over it. I'm definitely over it." Yeah, but uh, that's got to be a tough one, right? I mean, how 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 much tougher could that get than you know? But what a great guy he is, man. Pete Best, great guy. But Ringo is uh, Ringo is uh, I mean, you know, he was just just Ringo, right? He's and my thing, I played uh, the person, uh, the friend of mine that got me that uh, got me that part was uh, she knew that I did Grease. So I had a good, you know, I, I slicked the hair up and did the whole thing, you know, this thing. And uh, she says, Greg, just do that and sell Ringo the car, the 57 Chevy, you know. And uh, and that was literally the part. I, I don't even remember. I don't think I've seen the entire clip, you know. But but it was great to just meet and work with, with one of the Beatles, obviously, right? Come on. Yes. Who wouldn't want that? You oh, know? absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Eh, dice, bueno, que justamente, mira lo que son las cosas de la vida. Estaba en un, un meet and greet de esos lugares donde vas a conocer actores y lo conocí justo, a, viste, para hacer firmas y cosas por el estilo. Y lo conocí a Pete Best ahí. Y dice, lo, lo irónico que le mostré el material de lo que estaba haciendo así con Ringo. No sabían que Ringo reemplazó a Pete Best. Y, y dice, no, también ya lo superé. Le decía Pete Best. Dice, es un, <risa> Pete Best es una, una persona muy buena. Eh, dice, bueno, seamos honestos. Hice, hice esto solamente para conocer a Ringo. Eh, un amigo mío me consiguió la parte. Eh, sabía que había hecho Grease, que me había preparado con todo el pelo eh, y todo. Bueno, con el Chevy 57 me preparé y bueno, nada. D hizo eso para, para conocerlo a Ringo y dice, creo que nunca en mi vida vi todo el clip completo de lo que hice con Ringo. <risa> <risa> eh, bueno, pues, ¿sabes que ahora que dijo eso, ¿sabes que le, le voy a hacer una pregunta que, que, que muchos actores eh, no, les cuesta? Es ver si a ellos mismos actuando. Así que Ahí justo está. ahora que dijo eso, que no vi el clip, me gustaría saber qué, qué opina Greg de eso. Uh, so Greg, now that you mentioned that, you brought that up, uh, that you didn't see the full clip of what you did there. Uh, something I'd like to know about actors. There are actors who they don't like to see themselves on screen. Uh, so yeah. I just, it, it, is it hard for you to see yourself perform? Uh, or or you, you can enjoy be, it like would you? Yeah, it used to be a lot harder, okay? So so what it, you know, I <laughs> I learned a great lesson from my son, you know, because he, he took, uh, you know, kind of followed in my footsteps when it comes to music and everything. You know, I don't know if you know, how, he's one of the biggest producers there is out there right now. You know, he did that song, Girls Like You, and What Lovers Do, and Heart Attack, Demi Lovato. And so he's got big, you know, the songs that he's written and produced. And uh, But the thing he always used to do when he was in the band is he would always watch himself. And I could never watch myself. I could not bear to see myself on. Because when I learned, you know, when I, with acting, I never... I never, my, the methods that I learned and the classes I took, you didn't care how you looked. You know, of course you got ready for your character, but you did not care about things like that. You know, leave that for everybody else. So, uh, so all you cared about was, was the character, the part, you know, what do I want? Why do I want it? How do I get it? You know? And, uh, and, and so my son, he used to watch himself and every time he did a show after that, he was better. <laughs> He was better on the next show every time. And so, you know, I got a great lesson from more, a few great lessons from him, but, but uh, a great lesson in that way that it doesn't hurt to watch yourself as long as you're critical 
about yourself as long as you can be critical but not you can't you know you can't change the essence of who you are so but you can definitely uh improve some bad habits maybe you know that that's what i notice more than anything is getting rid of bad habits bad acting habits when uh when i when i started watching myself a little closer you know that kind of thing but so to answer the question in the beginning i never did later on i did and i think i actually got better as an actor for it you know so wow yeah okay that is perfect yeah. okay uh, bueno soli antes dice solía ser difícil eh, lo que sí aprendí muchísimo de mi hijo él siguió mis pasos con lo que es el tema de de, de mi música eh, produ un montón de canciones que, bueno, la, él las la comentó recién, Heart Attack, Girls Like You, él es productor y escritor de música también. Eh, y dice, siempre lo veo a mi hijo que se vea a sí mismo, y, y yo la verdad no me soportaba verme a mí mismo, eh, porque uno va a la escuela de actuación y te enseña métodos, formas de crear el personaje, pero nadie se preocupa por tu imagen, cómo lucís en, eh, cuando estás haciéndolo. Eh, y por eso dice, a, que a, de joven no le interesaba hacerlo, y, y vi que mi hijo hacía un show, miraba el show y después el próximo show era mejor, y, y el próximo show mejor y el próximo show, y aprendí claro, sí, él, muchas, exacto, eh, muchas lecciones en la vida, pero dice, esa es muy buena que dice, no, 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 no te lastima verte a vos mismo eh, pero solo para ser crítico de lo que vas a hacer, no mm. para cambiar tu esencia, sino para cambiar los malos hábitos, los malos hábitos en las actuaciones eh, y dice, nuevamente, al principio no lo hacía nunca, y después de esta lección que me dio mi hijo, aprendí a hacerlo, y creo que me volví mejor actor Después de, eh, después de, de, de seguir esa técnica. That, that's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Eh, bueno, muchachos, ¿alguno de ustedes tiene algo? Bueno, a ver, obviamente que la mayoría de las preguntas apuntan a, a, a conocer un poco más de lo que, de lo que nosotros lo conocimos con, como BJ. Hola, Charlie. Eh, así que, bueno, si nos puede contar también brevemente cómo se dio el papel de BJ, si él lo buscó o le cayó, digamos, este, para ver cómo, cómo fue, cómo fue el, el ingreso, digamos, a, a nuestra historia también a través de ese personaje. Ok, I don't know if you got that question, but ok, most of the questions that we're receiving are, of course, about uh, BJ McKay. Um, right. But yeah, you know that you have a very rich story, but we need to get to that. So what uh, Chilo wants to know is, how did you land the role? I mean, did you... Five for, I mean, how do you became part of our history? <laughs> that even till today, you see a truck driver, hey, BJ, down here at least it works like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, all, this, all the bigger shows that I've got, the stories are not what you would think when it comes to the audition process, okay? So I'll tell you what happened with BJ and the Bear. Uh, with that show, I... Uh, I was ready to, to leave California. Things weren't going well. I was like, eh, I think I'm going to go back to New York, get back into the stage, you know, do things like that, go back and do, do the things that I, you know, started out doing. Right. So, uh, so I, uh, so my, but my agent, I was just about literally about to leave. I had my place packed in Burbank. I was, I went to Burbank because I heard of it. You know, I came from New Jersey. Right. So I, You know, I, I went to Burbank because I heard of Burbank. I said, oh, yeah, Johnny Carson show, Burbank. I was so far away from uh, from the studios and everything that I, you know, that I needed to go to that uh, that I made a mistake by going there. But but I was paying too much money for the house and everything. So I was ready to leave. I kind of was fed up. I had it. I was done with it. And uh, and my agent said, Greg, just go on this. Just go. Just go on this one audition. And I said, well, what, what is it? You know, she says, well, it's a guy, you know, that drives around and, and, you know, he, it's adventurous. He's in a truck. He has a chimp. And I said, what do you, what do you mean a chimp? You know, she says, she says, you know, a chimpanzee, you know, I said, a monkey, you know, I'm going to drive around. The, no, no, no. I said, no, nah, it's not for me. You know, she says, great. It's going to be a big show. Glenn Larson's doing it. So I said, all right, I'll tell you, I'll just go, but I'm leaving right after. So, uh, so I literally went down to uh, the stage, Universal Studios, I think it was, yeah. And they had the truck. See that truck right there? They had the first version of that truck set up. And uh, and I was in <laughs> I, I never went on an audition before where they actually had a truck, you know, or they had anything like that. So they said, oh, yeah, just get in the truck. We're doing a whole screen test while we, while we audition people. I said, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, all right, whatever, you know. So I jump up in the truck, you know, and there was a stuffed 
chimp next to me, you know. And, <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I had the papers. And my attitude, and this was the kind of the key of the story, the key, and probably probably really the attitude that if I would say to any actor that's trying to get into it, what would you, you know, what's the best attitude to have? I didn't care. Okay. So, uh, so I just literally, I mean, I didn't throw it away like I was trying to do bad, but I just, I just did the lines. I didn't care. You know, I was like, yeah, whatever. And, uh, I was finished. I, I walked out, I got out of the truck. I said, all right, well, thanks. See ya. Cause, cause I knew I was out of there. I was going, going back and literally was probably gonna drive out either start that night or the next day. And, uh, and so by the time I got, oh, oh, I got to tell you. So Glenn Larson runs up to me, right? He comes up to me. He says, "Hey, uh, um, how old are you?" And I and I told him I, I forget what I was like, twenty three or twenty four or something like that. And he says, um, he says, huh, "That's the problem. You're a little young for this." And I said, "Oh, yeah, okay. Well, you know." And he says, "Yeah, but I think you're the guy." And I go, "Oh, okay, sure." So, uh, so he says, you could have been in Vietnam. I said, well, yeah, yeah, definitely. I was definitely uh, around for that. Uh, so, uh, so he says, all right, like that. I said, all right. And I, and I, and I just left. I figured, you know, there's no way. By the time I get home, my answering machine was filled with calls, right? From the agent. Call me right away. Call me. Call me. <laughs> You know, and we had answering machines then, you know, with the tape, with the tape and everything. And so, uh, so she, uh, so I call her up. She goes, "You got it. What did you do?" I said, "I don't know what I nothing. <laughs> I didn't do anything." And she says, "Well, you got it." I said, "Well, I guess I'm not leaving, huh?" <laughs> and that was it, man. That's how I got it. It was just like that, you know. It was usually you go through numerous auditions. You go through, you know, they put you through the hoops. But not this. That was it, you know. Meant to be, my friend. Meant to be. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Eh, dice, bueno, todos los shows. <laughs> oh, no, I, I have no show. I, I won't He's miss so it. He's good. He's good. I'm telling you guys, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Eh, dice, bueno, todos los shows, las historias no son lo que pensás durante la audición. Donde el, durante el proceso de audición te cuentan algo, pero no termina siendo lo que es. Eh, dice, bueno, les voy a contar lo que pasó con BJ. En este show, yo estaba cansado, yo estaba podrido de California, estaba viviendo en Burbank porque había escuchado el nombre de Burbank y me alquilé algo ahí, pero la verdad era casa cara, estaba lejos de los estudios, no me servía para hacer casting, estaba medio saturado, medio podrido, dice, me cansé, voy a volver a, la, a las esencias, voy a volver para Nueva York eh, y empezar, volver a donde empecé. Eh, dice, bueno, estaba a punto de irme, dice, tenía todo empaquetado ya en Burbank para, para irse esa misma noche o al otro día. Eh, y dice, bueno, nada, eh, se había cansado básicamente, y la gente lo llama por teléfono y dice, mira, ahí está audición, y él le pregunta, ¿de qué es? Y mira, este es un flaco, es una, es una historia de aventura, es un flaco que está en un camión con un chimp, y dice, con un chimp, sí, un chimp francés, <risa> y, y, y le dice, no, pero yo no voy a hacer eso, y dice, bueno, pero la, la serie esta la produce Glenn Larson, va a ser bastante grande, eh, y él dice, bueno, ok, vamos a hacer esta audición, pero después de la audición me voy. Así que bueno, fui a los estudios Universal y se me pasó algo que no me pasó nunca en ninguna otra audición. Tenían un camión armado, la primera versión del camión la tenían puesta ahí. Eh, y dice, nunca en mi vida fue una audición que tuviera un camión o algo similar. Eh, ¿Por qué? Porque querían hacer una prueba de cámara con el actor en el camión para ver cómo lucían juntos. Eh, dice, me subí y apenas me subí al camión... Tenía un mono de peluche puesto en el camión. Eh, y dice, ¿sabes qué? Mi, mi actitud era, no me importa. Dice, literalmente, no es que lo hice mal, quería que saliera mal. Era que no me importaba. Dice, la audición bien, pero no, no era algo que estaba desesperado. Ah, como un trámite. Como un trámite. Exacto. Claro. Esa noche me iba, dice, me iba esa noche o, la, o, la pro, y al próximo, o al próximo día de New York. Y dice, terminé de hacer la audición y se me acerca Glenn Larson. Y dice, se me acerca y dice, mmm, ¿Cuántos años tenés vos, pibe? Le dice, 23, en esa época tenía 23, 24 años. Y dice, y ese es el problema, que sos medio joven. Eh, porque, bueno, no sé si se acuerda, pero BJ era, eh, era un ex... Eh, ex claro, soldado, veterano. Un veterano. Un veterano, mm. exacto. Eh, pero dice, pero creo que vos sos el tipo. Aunque podrías haber estado en Vietnam. Y Greg dice, sí, claro, la verdad, las la fechas daban, podría haber estado en Vietnam tranquilamente. Y dice, all right, all right, all right. Dice, que le dijo? Y te dijo, bueno. <risa> Llega a la casa... <risa> No, 
<ríe> Increíble, llega a la casa y dice la contestadora, el cassette de la contestadora lleno de llamadas de la gente diciendo llámame, 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 llámame. <risa> eh, lo llaman por teléfono y le dice la gente, ¿qué hiciste? ¿Lo conseguiste? ¿Te dieron la parte? Eh, dice, no, no hice nada, no nada, nada especial. Le dice, bueno, conseguiste la parte. Dice, bueno, entonces, no quise creo, hacer nada. <risa> creo, creo que no me voy. Dice, usualmente en un, en un, en un proceso así es un montón de audiciones, pero en este caso fue sencillo. Fue solo una y lo tomaron. Y bueno, como lo dije yo, parece que era el, el, el destino, ¿no? Que tenía que hacer esto. Ah, totalmente. Claro. Wow. Claro. Muy, muy bueno. You did a good so, job, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. How, how did it go after that? Uh, I mean, preparing for the role. I'm, I'm sure, yeah. There, the, I'm sure there will be some stories about the, the, the monkeys. Yeah. And the, we always heard that it's difficult to work with kids and with animals. So, but just how, 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 did, how did it go from the audition to the actual first days of shooting uh it was it was uh it was a slower process because you know they first we had to shoot that pilot you know we, we shot the pilot and uh and then we had on the pilot we got fogged in for a month so uh we were up in uh, up and around uh what was it oroville california up north and we got this fog came in and uh literally it stayed for a month And we were stuck. So we were, you know, they were paying us all this overtime. In those days, they were paying a lot of overtime. They would, they'd never do that today. They'd probably just cancel it or something. I don't know. But, uh, but you know, I was getting these giant overtime checks and it was, it was great. Um, and we just, we, we worked on doing the show. And then, and then after that, we did, because uh, there was the seven, there was these seven lady truckers on the show and they had to get, they had to get these, uh, they had to get, the show uh, with the network kept giving different notes and this and that. So they were trying to kind of hone the show to see what it was going to be, you know? And, uh, and so then we waited after we shot that pilot, we waited God, it must've been, it felt like a year. <laughs> I think it was probably maybe three quarters of a year or something like that. We waited until, uh, until we finally got the, the chance to get on the air. And then, and then when they aired it, what was amazing was uh, that we got a, uh, a 40, 46 share. Now you don't get a four. You don't get, I mean, if you get a two share, <laughs> right? But we got a 46 share. And you uh, the Super Bowl. it was crazy. Yeah, it was insane. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I remember Norman Lear, not Norman Lear, what am I talking about? Um, like uh, Fred Silverman. Fred Silverman was at the network then, at the NBC. And he didn't want a chimp on his network. He did not want any show that had a chimp on his network. He was more into like the police shows and that kind of thing, you know? And um, so there was a big, big battle with that and we almost lost it. But then Glenn Larson said, look, air it again. If it doesn't get the numbers, you don't believe, the, you don't believe 46 share, then, you know, I guess you're going to do what you want to do. And so they aired it again against that show network, the first run of network. That was a big show that was on TV. I remember, remember that show. It was like, uh, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take anymore. When they, <laughs> the guy in New York yells out the window. It was a great show. It's, uh, it was a movie, you know. And so they, 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 uh, they aired us against the first run of this movie network, which was a big, you know, a big success when it was in the theaters. And then they were going to air it on TV. And we got a 42 share against network. So we wiped them out, you know. And uh, I, I guess Larson, just, not Larson, I said, Fred Silverman just figured, you know, I guess I'm putting this show on my network, you know? So, wow. but it was always, always, but we were always bucking the network, always bucking the network the whole time with what they wanted to do and the kind of show we were making, which was a, guy, a show about a guy and a chimp on the road running into different problems. And it was an anthology. We were doing an anthology. With, with all these different stories along the way. Each one was different. Each one stood on its own, you know? So, and then I'll tell you after that what, um, you know, what happened. You got it, you got it. Eh, dice, bueno, el proceso fue muy lento. Tuvimos que filmar el piloto. <coughs> Luego estuvieron parados por casi un mes en Orville, California, porque tuvieron niebla. Dice que tuvo una niebla tremenda de casi mm. un mes y no podían filmar. Pero dice, lo bueno, en esa época que les pagaban, pagaban un montón de, de dinero extra por horas extras. Dice, bueno, me siguen llegando los cheques por horas extras. Dice, eso en este momento no lo harían seguramente. Hasta podrían llegar a cancelar el show con tal de no pagar más. 
eh, y dice, bueno, cuando estaban haciendo el piloto, había como siete, siete conductoras de camión también en el piloto, y eran, iban tomando notas de las cosas que podían cambiar para hacerlo eh, funcionar mejor, ¿no? Y dice, bueno, cuando terminaron de filmar el piloto, eh, tardaron, tuvieron que esperar más o menos tres cuartos de un año eh, hacia, para, para, para ver los resultados, y que mm. se hiciera y que saliera al aire, y dice, cuando salió al aire, al aire fue una cosa increíble, tuvimos 46% de rating. Imagínense, 46% de los televisores bueno, mirando tremendo. eso. Como le dije a él, más que el Super Bowl. Eh, dice que estaba Fred Silverman del canal de NBC que dijo, yo no hay forma que yo quiera un chimpancé en uno de mis shows de televisión. A, él, a, él, a Fred le gustaban los programas de, de policías, pero Greg Larson le dijo, mira, ¿sabes qué? Pasalo otra vez, si no querés los números, pasalo otra vez al, al piloto, a ver qué les parece. Eh, y dice, bueno, lo volvieron a pasar, pero ahora lo que hicieron lo pusieron en contra de un show que se llamaba Network, que dice, fue una película muy conocida, que había salido en el cine y la estaban por pasar en televisión, y dice, por primera vez, y fueron en contra de Network y dijeron, bueno, le va a pasar el, trepo, el trapo, ¿qué pasó? Sacaron 42% de rating eh, con el show, y ahí dijo Fred Silverman, bueno, creo que vamos a tener que poner puede, a HPC, y, y puede, bueno, puede y, funcionar. Uy, ¿qué pasó? Eh, seguir ganándole siempre al canal, ganándole con lo que queríamos hacer versus lo que ellos querían hacer, siempre salíamos ganando nosotros. Y seamos honestos, esto es una, una serie de antología, es un flaco en un camión, yendo de ciudad en ciudad con su mono, resolviendo mm. problemas. Eh, bueno, y ahora dice, y ahora les voy a contar qué pasó después de todo eso. All right, carry on. Yeah. Ok, so then, uh, then what happened was um, we were doing well, you know, we were getting great ratings, we got... Uh, We're, we're averaging like between 32 and 35 uh, share a week. And then uh, and it's funny uh, because I was doing one Battle of the Network Stars, right? And this is already two years into it. And I'm doing Battle of the Network Stars. And well, maybe it was one and a half. I, I can't remember exactly. but I think it was two. But doing this Battle of the Network Stars and, and I see this girl. Beautiful girl, blonde hair, looking great in her bathing suit. You know, her mom was twirling her hair a little bit, you know, and she's sitting there and I'm walking by and and I just kind of give a, hey, how you doing? How could you not? How you doing? So, uh, so uh, it was Judy Landers. So Judy, she comes running up to me. She goes, hi, I'm going to be a trucker on your show. And I go, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, What? Uh, okay. And I just said, okay, well, nice to meet you. Good luck today. And I walk away. Right. First thing I do is I go to a phone booth because we didn't have any other way. So I went to a phone booth. I called this guy, Dick Lindheim, who was at Universal that I always talked to. He was one of the producers of the show. I said, Hey Dick, I got, I got to ask you. I just, a girl ran up to me and she told me that she's going to be a trucker on our show. What is that all about? And he says, Greg, I, I've been meaning to tell you this, but I, I I didn't know how to tell you, but, you know, I said, what, Dick? He, said, <laughs> he says, uh, Fred Silverman wants seven lady truckers on the show. I'm like, for what? He goes, to drive the truck. And I said, <laughs> I said, oh, really? That's a whole different show. And he goes, yeah. They want to bring it to the studio. They want to bring it home. They want to control it. They don't want you out there driving around, you know, anywhere so that was that was the change that's how we changed to uh the seven lady trucker thing and, and the whole show changed and then we got killed by the writer strike after that anyway so but we did 50 shows total and uh lobo did they did the spin-off of lobo did 50 shows so we put those 50 and 50 and we had 100 shows and we got syndicated so that was great you know on to the next you know. <laughs> wow 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 <laughs> You, you make yeah. it sound, it's just a job, but then to us, you know, it's, it's we view it in a different way, but it's just a job, yeah. Yeah, exactly. no, to me, it wasn't just a job. It, it meant a lot to me, you know, and uh, and it, but the thing is, is you realize that you're a card in a deck. You're in, you're a card in a deck with networks, and that's all you are. You, they throw the cards around. You know, we all go out and everybody, big producers spend millions of dollars and. Studios spend all that money, but you're just a card in a deck. And when it comes down to ratings and what's what's making the ratings and what people go for, because you know somebody produces something, it doesn't mean that the public is going to like it. 
and then somebody produces something else that nobody thinks anybody's going to like, and then the public loves it, you know, which is like BJ and the bear. I mean, people loved the show, you know? So, and I felt it too, you know? So it was great. Sorry. Yeah. But my personal belief is that, yeah, all of the shows in the 80s, they're so big and they got so famous and inspired us so much. But if you look at them, they're all the same thing. The Incredible Hulk on the road, helping pe people in different cities. The A-Team. Uh, I mean, they're all the same thing, just helping people on the road. And that's crazy. It works. I don't know if it will work today, but it worked back then. Yeah. Uh, bueno, vamos a decir, eh, dice, los iba, nos iba genial, teníamos rating todas las semanas que iban entre 32 y 35 puntos. Eh, lo gracioso que estaba entre las batallas de las, eh, que la llamó the, Network, the Battle of the Network Stars, de la batalla entre las, las, eh, entre las estrellas de, los, de las productoras de los canales. Eh, y bueno, estábamos ahí y veo una chica hermosa eh, en, el, en el camino, en el estudio, con su malla, su mamá le estaba peinando el pelo y dice, bueno, que voy a hacer la típica de hey, Don, ¿cómo te va? <risa> ¿Quién era? <risa> sí. Y yo y trivial, ¿no? <laughs> Greg tiene que, que pedir derechos, ¿no? Por eso. You need to ask for some legal rights for there from Joey Triviani. <laughs> eh, y bueno, quien era Judy Landers en, en su malla ahí. Eh, y, y nada, siguió de largo. Bueno, lo que pregunta dice, bueno, ¿quién es esta chica? Dice, bueno, va a ser de camionera en el show. Así que bueno, va a una cabina telefónica. Dice, bueno, en esa época teníamos cabinas telefónicas. Y dice, llamé a Dick Lanehaim, que era un productor del show. Y le digo, che, acabo de conocer a esta chica que va a ser una camionera. ¿De qué va esto? ¿Qué quiere decir esto? No, 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 y el flaco le dice, bueno, mira, no sabía cómo decírtelo, pero Greg Silverman quiere que haya siete minas camioneras en el show. Dice, ¿para qué? Y para que manejen camiones. Y dice, bueno, pero esto se cambia totalmente. Vas a dejar de ser el show que estamos haciendo para hacer algo completamente diferente. Y dice, bueno, es lo que quiere el estudio. No quiero que estén ahí afuera, yendo de ciudad en ciudad, eh, sino que, que, que firmen acá en el estudio, estén todo controlado. Y bueno, dice, hasta ahí llegamos, básicamente. Luego llegó el... el el corte de, de los escritores, algo que pasó hace unos años, que hicieron una huelga, y dice, bueno, ese fue el final de nuestro show. Eh, nuestro show está unido a la otra serie que también acá fue muy conocida, que era el Sheriff Lobo. ¿se Sheriff Lobo. Eh, es más, sí, sí, BJ sí, claro. apareció en varios capítulos de Sheriff Lobo y viceversa. Y dice, bueno, entre los dos shows siempre se venían como un paquete, eran 50, shows de, 50 capítulos de BJ y 50 de Sheriff Lobo, uniendo los 100 shows, y bueno, siempre se vendió como un, como un paquete así. Eh, yo le dije a Greg, increíble, vos nos contás a nosotros si esto lo ves como un trabajo y nos contás si es un laburo que se cerró y pasaste otra página, él dice, bueno, para mí no fue solamente un show, significó mucho para mí, pero tenés que entender que vos solamente sos una carta en un mazo de cartas en la mesa de, de los networks, de, la, de, la, de las empresas, de las productoras, de los estudios, eh, gastan todo su dinero, piensan que okay, esto va a salir genial y termina no funcionando y después gastan poco y esto no va a funcionar y termina funcione, funcionando. Y si, por más que ponga mucho dinero, nunca van a saber lo que, lo que la gente ama y termina enamorándose. Y eso, bueno, por ejemplo, es lo que pasó acá con, con BJ, que la gente se enamoró de este show, ¿no? Exactamente. Exacto. Y, y, y lo que nos ha pasado con muchos de los invitados también, que, que después, es decir, no ter, terminan dándose cuenta después con el tiempo cómo la gente adopta y cómo ama la serie o... O, o, o la actividad que hacen y en ese mismo momento la ven ellos la ven como un trabajo pero para nosotros es parte de nuestra infancia entonces después ven ese valor agregado eh, eso eso uh -huh. es, es importantísimo también de, de, de destacar uh -huh. so uh, yeah, yeah what Jill is saying uh, yeah un poquito Sergio yeah he was just wanted to make a statement that uh, the lot of actors then that we see here too they realize after years of making a part of that that they become part of the pop culture that is within our lives and the words that we say for example how are you doing you know that that's part of you know what you're talking about what show what character it is so uh it becomes like well like chelo said part of the, the the pop culture something very important for the rest of the people but yeah. you don't see it in the moment that you're doing it you see it probably years after so right see, I'm yeah. Yeah. very uh, true no dos cositas uh, le quería mostrar un poco del del merchandising de los juguetes que había en nuestra época que a ver qué, para que se ríe un poco, ¿no? Claro, para que claro, se claro. Okay, Greg. Um, okay, uh, yeah. Before the next question, Sergio has some pictures that he prepared because down here, like I said, BJ was huge. So right. there were many toy companies selling BJ stuff. So this stuff that you're going to be seeing is from down oh, here. Oh wow! Oh wow! Look at that, huh? <laughs> 
The art is pretty cool, actually. Yeah. <laughs> never seen any of the, uh, any of these, right? Or I've never seen those. No, I've never seen those. This is nunca nunca lo vi. Ninguno de esos. Exclusivamente de Argentina. Ese. Yeah, these are all from down here, from Argentina. Yeah, yeah. Le, pa Eso es un, le ¿no? pagaron derechos. <laughs> le pagaron derechos de imagen. Yeah. <laughs> I've signed a lot of trucks, but I've never seen those. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, Charlie's asking if you got any, any any royalties or something for using your image with those toys. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, I, think, uh, I think we all sold those out right at the beginning, you know? Uh, dice que, ah, que vendió su imagen al principio. Oh, so you, you, oh, oh, you're right. Yes, you sell your image, so the network. You sign, yeah, the small print. You know, they, they, they have a big plan. That was uh, all marketing. You sell all that marketing. You got to be, uh, you know, at the time, you got to be like Tom Cruise or somebody, you know, uh, <laughs> and then you get a better deal, you know. But in the beginning, this show, you know, got me on the map. This show got me on the map, you know. So. I didn't really care about anything like that. I just wanted to, you know, just get in something, you know? Yeah, of course, of course. Dice, bueno, en ese momento, bueno, cuando firmaste el contrato, en la letra pequeñita, dice eso, que estás dando tu imagen, y dices algo yeah. de marketing. En ese momento, para serte honesto, a mí no me importaba. Este show me puso en el mapa. Me puso en el mapa del yeah. mundo, así que no, yeah. nunca me importó eso en esa parte. Eh, dice, tenés que ser como Tom Cruise para tener un contrato en el cual eh, cobras algo de regalías o algo por tu, por tu imagen. Bueno, yo tengo una pregunta con respecto al show, obviamente para no extenderlo muchísimo con BJ, pero bueno, queremos hablar de BJ. Eh, quiero saber, bueno, si eh, tuvo que aprender a manejar camiones, porque muchas de las escenas maneja él, y si nos puede contar alguna anécdota, si siempre salió todo perfecto, eso pasó alguna vez algo medio raro. Um, so, uh, yeah, still on, on the BJ before we move on to the next stage, but... Uh, Did you have to learn how to drive trucks? And because in a lot of scenes, it looks like it's actually you doing like even the stunts. So, oh, yeah. if yeah. you have any 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 funny stories, you can tell us about that. I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you because I I did uh, you know I drove the truck every day for the time we the time we did the show. They sent me to uh, Wally Thor's Truck Masters. Like two days two days later, I was they threw me in the truck, and I you know I learned how to drive the truck. And, uh, and it was, then it was like, what is it? Like 16 gears or something. And you had to double clutch. So now they're all automatic, you know? But, um, so it was, it was, it was intense with the, you know, you make a mistake coming down a big hill, you know, you could have a problem. Uh, so the fun, the funny story, but I did, the reason why it looks so real is because I was driving it every day. That, that, there's no doubt about that. So, uh, <clears throat> so the, but one thing that happened up in Lake Tahoe, I remember, um, And we had, we took the, it was very icy and snowy up in the roads up there, you know, and I had, uh, we had the chimp in the truck. We had the, the cameraman, we had the sound guy, the strip, the script girl, the, um, uh, the director, everybody was in the back. <clears throat> They all fit in there. Everybody was tucked in. Everybody had their spot. They knew, you know, we had it down. And, um, and so I said to the guy before I went, I said, You sure everything's clear? Because it was all windy roads. He goes, oh, yeah, you got a straightaway. You're good. You're good the whole way. I says, okay. I says, he says, 35. Don't go more than 35. I said, right. Keep it at 35. <clears throat> It's downshift. You know? I said, yeah, 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 of course. So coming down the hill, all of a sudden, there's a big bend in the road. I don't know what this guy was talking about. And I said, My famous word I said so many times in that show, hold on, <laughs> right? So I'm coming down, and uh, and literally, there's no way I'm making this turn. There's no way. It's just too sharp, and I'm already moving pretty good, and it's all ice and snow. So the chimp is like this. The chimp's like, the chimp is looking. You know, he's he's like looking in the window like this, you know? And, uh, and then uh, we go off the road. Go off the road. We come down, and there's I remember the pine trees. There's pine trees everywhere. And we're coming down through these pine trees. And uh, and every nobody said one word on the truck, by the way. Nobody screamed, nobody did anything. Everybody was just frozen. And here we are. I'm coming through the thing, and I'm just I'm just driving. There's nothing I can do. I'm just trying to avoid things. And and here comes a big tree, a big 
pine tree and we stop right before the pine tree and we look and I look over and the chips like this <laughs> the, like that, the director goes you know oh everybody just looks at each other we're like we can't believe we didn't just get killed and uh I look over I said boy that's gonna look good on the the outtake reel because <laughs> we were we were as real as we ever were you know <laughs> acting wise and uh and that was probably the most intense thing that happened with the truck you know like but it was it was crazy it was crazy <laughs> Translate that. <laughs> wow, what a great story! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you got to do the animation too, you know. <laughs> you got yeah, yeah, to, I'll do the face and everything. Eh, dice, bueno, te cuento una historia graciosa. Eh, siempre manejé el camión, o sea, cuando lo ven en el show, dicen, uy, este es Greg, sí, soy yo manejando el camión. Lo mandaron a un lugar que se llamaba Wally Thor's Track Masters. Eh, dice, dos días lo mandaron ahí, a los dos días ya estaba manejando. Un camión gigante con 16 ruedas y embrague doble. Dice, ahora son todos automáticos los camiones, pero en esa época no, tenía un embrague doble. Eh, bueno, les voy a contar una historia. Dice que en un error bajando una pendiente. Estaban en uh, la ciudad de Lake Tahoe, California, y había hielo y nieve en el, camino, en el camino. Estábamos en la cabina, en la cabina estaba el chimpancé, el camarógrafo, la piba del guión, el iluminador, dice, cada uno, ya, ya están todos acostumbrados, están todos en, metidos en la parte de atrás, cada uno tenía su Estamos lugar, atrás. siempre ya sabía dónde, dónde iba cada uno. Así que Garra le dice al flaco, le pregunta, y, y le dice, si el camino está libre, ¿puedo avanzar? Y dice, sí, 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 tranquilo, el camino es libre, recto, anda siempre a 35 millas como mucho, y acordate de ir siempre bajando los cambios para, eh, para, para reducir la velocidad. Vale, vale, buenísimo. Va bajando la colina, y de repente van dando 35 millas y se da cuenta que hay una curva. Y dice, Flaco dijo que era una línea recta, que no había curvas. Dice, así que no tengo ni idea qué es lo que pasó. Y, dice, y dijo, mi frase típica del show, agárrense todos, hold on. <ríe> eh, <risa> la frase de BJ que decía siempre. Y dijo, le dije, esta vez lo dije de forma literal. Y bueno, traté de hacer lo posible para no estrellarnos y esquivarla todas las cosas. Era una curva muy cerrada. Eh, dice que el chimpancé estaba mirando, me gusta cómo se refiere al chimpancé, iba mirando por la ventana tapándose los ojos. La tenía <ríe> arreglada. Sí, entendía todo. Eh, y trató de evitar todo, evitar pinos, cosas que salían por todos lados, y, y dice que nadie, estaban todos helados, nadie decía una palabra, nadie gritaba, nada, todos estaban esperando más o menos chocar y hacerse de goma. Y yo estoy ahí, solo manejando, tratando de no pegar a nada, y de repente aparece un pino adelante de nosotros, y ¿qué pasa? Alcanzan a frenar justo de golpe y se frenan y se quedan todos helados ahí, y dice, bueno, estaba el mono cubriéndose la cara, y el director dice, Dios mío, todos se miraron, no podían creer que no nos matamos, eh, y Craig le dice, bueno, esto va a quedar genial en el, en el, en el reel de los bloopers. Sí, bueno, ese fue el momento más, más intenso. Qué buena historia, boludo. El mono seguía el guión. Seguía el guión, el mono. The monkey was a great actor, right? That guy was, was fired awesome. immediately. That guy was fired immediately. Ah, dice que al chabón lo echaron automáticamente. Mira vos. Yeah, I can imagine. Wow. Right away. Yeah. Crazy. Qué, qué buena historia. Eh, yeah. bueno, no sé si tiene alguna pregunta. Yo le quiero preguntar. Sé que por ahí no le gusta hablar mucho del, del mono, pero eh, si era difícil trabajar con él. Uh, 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 I, I don't know. I, I heard that you don't like hearing about the chimpanzee or anything that, that you're tired of that, but was it hard to work with an animal? I know that there were twins, if I'm not crazy, or there were two. Was well, it hard? It was, one, was, uh, one was the stunt chimp, and the other was the, uh, the, the film chimp. So, you know, it, If there was, if you needed the chimp to be drunk at the bar, you know, you had to use the other one. You know, <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! You, you I read between lines. You, you can't do that today at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but th god. those were really good trained, right? They they could pull it off, or was it hard to oh, yeah. actually interact? They were trained, yeah. But the. Uh, But he, you know, you could really talk to him. He was, he, he understood the world he was living in. You know what I mean? It's like he knew, you know, come on, let's go. We got to go. You know, well, he'll come with you right away. You know, you want something to eat? You know, you give him some food. You know, what I mean? you know he, he was very in tune with, uh, you know, with us. So and that's all he knew. Oh, and then, good. Uh, yeah. The other one was, uh, the other one was very, um, She wasn't quite, she didn't quite have the personality that Sam had, you know? 
Sam was a, you know, so, but she was great. They're, they're all great. They, they, they shouldn't be allowed to do anything like that. You shouldn't be taking chimps out of the wild. You know what I mean? It, it's all wrong. But in those days, they didn't, they did these things, you know? Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think it started with Tarson, like in the black and white era. Uh, yeah. It's a movie different in a different world right now, of course. Yeah. We yeah, evolved. Absolutely. Yeah. In some ways, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, totally. Dice, bueno, dije, bueno, sé que mucho no te gusta hablar de todo lo que es lo del mono y todo, pero eh, era difícil actuar como actor con, con un mono, con un chimpancé. Y me dice, bueno, teníamos dos, teníamos el normal y era el doble. Y ahí se, se rió un poco Greg. Eh, pues dice, hay cosas que hacíamos que no se podían hacer normalmente. Pues teníamos el, el, el Sam, que era el, el mono principal, y después teníamos una hembra que era la doble. Eh, y dice, por ejemplo, las escenas que tenía que hacer de borracho, bueno, digamos que esas cosas no se, podían hacer a, no se podrían hacer ahora. O sea, como para que entiendan lo que, claro. lo que hacían con el, con el mono de reemplazo. Todos eh, presos. Y, ¿no? y le pregunté si era difícil... Todo preso, sí. Everyone, everyone in jail. Eh, dice, eh, bueno, le pregunté nuevamente, bueno, si era difícil interactuar o, o sea, cuando tenía actores, dice, la verdad, él entendía todo. Eh, o sea, él entendía el mundo en el que estaba. Vos decías, vení, vamos, hace esto, lo hacía. Tenés hambre, vamos a comer. Estaba muy bien entrenado. Y dice, bueno, y el segunda, la segunda chimpancé no tenía la personalidad de Sam. Pero dice, bueno, vamos a terminar con algo sencillo. No te, hoy en día no, no se podría permitir una cosa así, era otra claro. época. Eh, obviamente, muy entendible. Y bueno, como le dije yo, como Tarzán en la vieja, vieja época de blanco y negro, estaban con chimpancés. Eh, bueno, ya vamos una hora y diez minutos. Le voy a preguntar a Greg si tiene unos Pregúntale minutos Pregúntale por las dudas. So, Greg, dale, we, dale, we've been dale. doing this for about an hour. I don't know if you have a few more minutes. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. Sí, sí, tiene unos minutitos más. No, no yeah. unos minutitos más. Sí, awesome. Sí, sí. Par de... eh, yeah. Bueno. ¿Tiene alguna preguntita, muchachos? ¿Alguien del público que quiera preguntar algo? Ahí está, una pregunta de la gente. Ah, Charlie, Charlie, los auriculares se te están dando sin batería, como lo sí, que lo ves. Te hace esta interferencia. Yo la leo y mientras tanto, hay una pregunta Ahí de está. profe que dice, pregunta si en la época de la serie eh, BJ realizaba giras, así como, como pasaba con el auto fantástico. Para ver cómo era, más o menos. So, I don't know if you understand that question. That is one of the questions from the audience. They want to know when you were uh, in the BJ era, uh, if you were touring, uh, like, for example, the people in Knight Rider or TV shows like Chips or, or the Dukes of Hazzard that were touring with the car and everything, doing shows. Yeah. Uh, once in a while, I didn't really, I didn't really, uh, tour. I would just do some personal appearances where, like, I remember we did some truck shows, car shows, things like that. But I was doing... Uh, my music, I, I always had the, you know, putting together a band and doing some shows in Hollywood and that kind of thing. So, you know, but the problem is I had to work all the time with this show, you know, so I liked it. I, I loved the work, you know, but I, you know, so it was, it was always torn between whatever music I could possibly do. And, you know, because I, I mean, I, I would get the songs in like, uh, like I wrote the theme song to uh, co-wrote my buddy Lenny. Uh, to uh, my two dads. So we, we wrote that together and I sang that and I sang the theme song for uh, BJ, you know, and uh, any show that I did, I always tried to get it, get some music in there. And if I could, if they would go for it, you know, and uh, so I was always doing the music and shooting the shows, you know, that was, that was my life. You know? So I didn't really have time to go on the road and do like what you would normally do if you're a musician to go out there and just, you know, go out there and try to, you know, promote your career on the road. I, I couldn't do that because I didn't have, I didn't have the time for that, you know, but I would do shows and different appearances and TV shows. And remember, you know, Merv Griffith, Dinah Shore, all the, I mean, all the shows that were around those days, you know, I was on all those shows, you know? So. Yeah, no, no, I mean, you know, what? I have a full list of everything that you did, but yeah, we're not going to have enough time today. Probably we'll, we'll keep it for a second time, but yeah, yeah. yeah okay. okay, let me, yeah. let me, let me translate this. Eh, sí, de vez en cuando hacían shows, pero dice, no era algo muy común, hacían apariciones en shows de autos y shows de camiones. Es lo que trataba de hacer, en realidad era su música. Eh, eh, lo que hacía es trataba de armar shows en Hollywood. El problema era que no, que trabajaba sin parar. Y dice, bueno, me gustaba, pero trataba de combinar la música y meter shows. Y bueno, y también algo, y justamente, bueno, eso me gustaría que sea una buena próxima pregunta, si les parece. La eh, él escribió la música, la canción de BJ la hizo él. La canción de My Two Dads la hizo él también. 
eh, y él, bueno, siempre ha tratado de hacer eso, conseguir y firmar contratos para meter su música, y, y dice, bueno, mientras firmaban shows, dice, trabajé en un montón de shows, todos los shows que estaban en esa época, eh, desde el show de Mark Griffin, bueno, trabajó en un montón de shows, ¿no? De todos, todo lo que pueda existir, Dallas, eh, un montón de shows, y trataba de meter su música ahí, pero bueno, siempre trabajando, 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 trabajando. Así, bueno, sí, sí. Les molesta, le puedo preguntar acerca de la música, si les parece sí, no, bien, Vamos yeah, por okay. ese lado. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're... Estás muteado, Charlie. Ahora, ahora sí. Bien, Ahí ahora está. Sí. Es más, para después, hasta si quieren nos despedimos con eso, eh, hay mucha gente, así lo dejamos tranquilo, que está pidiendo que él cante, la can aunque sea un poquito de la canción, ya que era de él. Así que... We want to leave you alone with, with BJ and the bear and move on to your music oh. career. <laughs> But we're getting questions from the people that know that you actually did the theme song. And I'm, I'm embarrassed to ask this, but I'm the, I'm the one putting the face. <laughs> I want to know if you can just sing a little bit of the, of the song. I'm sorry. <laughs> you mean the BJ song from BJ? Yeah. That that that's the, is it? Yeah. Are you ready? Sorry. <laughs> Either way you go, and not exactly know it. No, the best line in the whole song is, uh, Best of all, I don't pay property tax. <laughs> <laughs> the funny, funny thing was, Glenn Larson, like when I was singing in the studio, I was singing it like, Hey, the way you go, and not exactly know it. Right? So Glenn, Glenn comes in, he goes, Greg, wait, 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 wait. You got to get more. It's a trucking show. You know, you got to get more gruff with the voice, you know? So I, I said, oh, you mean like something like, either way you go in, not exactly no win. I said, he says, yeah, 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 do that. That'll be perfect. And that's how it came out that way. <laughs> It's not the way I sing, but, you know, it was like for the show. Qué bueno. Bueno, ahí está la gente que la pidió. Bueno, muchas gracias. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> We're living a live show here. Eh, dice cuando estaba en, en el estudio y estaban grabando la canción, eh, la cantó con su voz normal, bueno, como la interpretó justo ahí, uh -huh. y dice que Glenn Larson se la acercó y dice, che, pero mira, es un show de camionero, ¿no? Puedes ser un poco más duro, más gastado. Y le dice, ¿qué? Lo canta y lo canta con esa voz y dice, bueno, vamos a dormir. I'm just going to project it. You dream some better scenes. Yes. <laughs> Qué bueno, che, qué buena, qué buena historia. ¿eh? Bueno, no mucha gente lo sabía, eh, porque obviamente acá lo escuchábamos en castellano, BJ, y la intro estaba en inglés, eh, o sea, nadie, sí, claro. nadie suponía que era el tema del. Uh, just down here, the, it was translated, so we have your voice in Spanish, but we couldn't figure out, you know, it's the same voice, it's the same guy. So it, it's not something that everybody knows, that it was you actually who, who sang. Oh, ok, ok. I know, I remember um, one time somebody sent me from uh, Japan. Uh, the show was in, in Japan was doing well, and uh, and I and I said, uh, boy, I hope they gave me like you know a lower voice, you know, and uh, instead of you know I don't know how, I don't know any Japanese, so uh, <laughs> but, but but the guy was like, oh, so I don't know. I was like, I don't know. it was like that, you know, I was like it was right in there, you know, and I was happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Nice, okay. eh, dice que alguien me le mandó unas escenas de la versión japonesa, porque dice en Japón también era muy, muy, muy grande BJ, dice, ojalá que me, me toque algún chabón que haga la voz grave y no alguien que hable con un mime, mime", así, y dice bueno, cuando lo escuché, bueno, ya lo escucharon hablando, haciendo la versión en japonés, ¡oh, que lo soy yo! Y, y le dice, bueno, me gustó mucho, estuve muy, muy feliz con eso. Qué, qué capo, boludo, qué capo, es buenísimo esto, esto es buenísimo. Bueno, eh, music, bueno, la música, yeah. Greg, les parece. Vamos, eh, le sí, sí, sí. So, Greg, yeah, sorry, yeah, we needed to know about that. So, let's jump into your, your music career. I know it's sometimes it looks like you had to put things in the back burner uh, with your music to, to perform, uh, but it's been a part of your life since you were a kid, basically. Yeah. So, um, tell us more. Paul Shave. Yeah, shows. Well, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I could tell you that, you know, I, I got to, I got, You know, I had some success with it along the way. Like I said, I did a, you know, I did a movie and I did the, 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 the track for the movie. With a friend of mine, Tom Harriman, we did the whole track uh, for a movie uh, with George Kennedy was in that movie. Uh, and then I did, um, like I said, I wrote the theme 
my two dads. The most recent thing was the Chromio. I had, uh, if you know, you know the band Chromio, and they're a Canadian band. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah, but no. the Canadian band Chromio. I know you know Sergio with yeah, them. No, no. no. Okay. sorry. I have a song on their uh, on their album called One Track Mind. So that was re that was more recent. That was in the last few years. And then um, I have this other project that I'm doing. Uh, where I recorded in London with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. So I'm playing the piano in that. And, uh, and it's all, it's eight pieces that I wrote 65 piece orchestra. And we did it at Abbey road in uh, London. Uh, so we, you know, got the big room in Abbey road and, and did it. Yeah. There you go. And uh, yeah. So if anybody wants to maybe see, you know, because right now everything's streaming, but, but there's a chance, you know, I want to, I want to do a, a record too. I want to do a, cause those, you know, 33s are coming back. Right. Uh, so I want to have the a album of that. And I also want to do a um, uh, CD, but not, a, but so I want to kind of get the idea of how many people would like to order a CD. There you go. Uh, and if you just put your name on their email, I definitely won't bug you like some people do with the emails, but, uh, but I'll send out, you know, the opportunity at the right time when, uh, if anybody's interested in, uh, you know, in the CD. So, you know, sign it, oh, okay. you know, make it a little more special than just uh, sending it, you know. And so that's that's where I'm at right now. I'm putting together a kind of a, a hub uh, where I can take all the music I've done throughout the years. I've got a lot of really good demos and songs besides the Slowdown album there. But uh, a lot of – so a place where it's all in one spot so people people that like the music can hear it. And, you know, producers want to use it for something, they can go there for that too, you know. So that's the project now I'm working on, putting that kind of hub for all my music together. And um, what I'd really love to do is go out and play it live, you know. But that's, you know, that's, uh, I got to put that together too. So there's a lot to put together, <laughs> you know, but I got my studio built now. So I, you know, I, I that's what I do with the pandemic time. So I, I kind of said, okay, well, I'm going to build this. So built this and, okay uh, uh let, let me just translate this part and yeah now oh, yeah, I, I want to see you have to translate the, 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 the <laughs> a little bit <laughs> eh, bueno le puedo decir eso tuve algo de éxito en, en lo que se refiere a toda mi carrera musical hice canciones para películas una la, hizo la música de una película de George Kennedy eh, hice el tema de My Two Dads mis dos papás que esa serie se vio acá también le escribió en la canción sí, eh, sí. bueno que la hacía eh, él mismo eh, que actuaba en la serie estaba muy buena eh, bueno, justamente dijo uno de mis últimos trabajos fue con One Track Mind eh, en, en los últimos años es una canción eh, pero bueno, esa, esa banda justo no, se, no es muy conocida acá, hizo un trabajo muy importante que hizo, que escribió ocho piezas para la Filarmónica de Londres la grabó en Abbey Road en el estudio de Abbey Road, increíble uh -huh. y, y bueno, y dice, bueno, justamente ahí estaba mostrando Serginio un poquito lo que es la página de Greg, que es evigan.com la pueden ver ahí abajo, ahí la estamos poniendo. Uh -huh. En la página de Greg ustedes pueden escuchar su música, pueden comprar si quieren sus discos. Está armando justamente ahora con el tema de que los vinilos están volviendo, está armando eh, justamente el tema de la, que grabó con la Filarmónica y él compuso ocho piezas. Eh, yeah. eh, de la, de, de, increíble. Eh, y está poniendo, está tratando de armarlo en CD y en vinilo dice, si se si quieren meter en la página, si quieres mostrarlo de nuevo, eh, Serginio, o, o Charlie, hay una parte donde uno se puede suscribir, y dice, quédense tranquilos, suscríbanse, pero no, no los voy a bombardear con email, no los voy a volver a <risa> Una vez que esté el disco para salir, si les interesa para comprarlo, yo se los firmo, yo se los personalizo, así que ahí está, pongan el nombre, apellido y dirección, eh, así bueno, que si a uno le interesa, luego cuando salga, se los dedica, si así tienen algo personalizado de, de él. Eh, dice, bueno, está tratando de poner todo el mismo trabajo de música en una, en una página, si ven ahí en el botón de música, por ahora tiene solamente dos discos, ¿no? Eh, pero está tratando de poner todo acá, todos sus trabajos que hizo desde sus discos, la música de películas de series también para, si alguien le interesa escuchar un poco y necesita para una serie una producción pueden entrar acá y escuchar y ver si le interesa comprar algo eh, para, para hacer, dice, bueno, eso es lo que pasó durante la pandemia, estuve trabajando mucho en construir mi estudio a si se nos puede mostrar un un poquitito del estudio que hizo eh, para dedicarse un poquito más a su música. Ahí está, aprieten el botón pre-order y, y lo Me pueden hacer. Ver, Igual también ver. habíamos hablado con Greg, eh, que si a ustedes le interesa también, por ejemplo, alguna foto firmada o algo, ya sabemos a mucha gente que le interesa, a mí me interesa, 
van a la parte de contacto, lo contactan y, y le escriben tranquilamente si, si, si quieren algún disco, fotos o lo que sea, y le, le pueden escribir ahí directamente. ¿okay? Igual acá cuando, estén, cuando tenga el disco de la Filarmónica, obviamente lo vamos a estar compartiendo en nuestras redes sociales como siempre. <risa> Yeah. Uh, so Greg, can you show us a little bit of your of your of your uh, studio there, the one that you put together? Yeah, I mean, the studio. I have, to, I have to do a crazy pan here. Let me see. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I got. Uh, you can see. Wow. We got the MIDI stuff, you know, and then we got the uh, the screen for when we do movies, and we can do all our editing up there, and you can see everything, and then. Uh, Then that's the vocal booth over there. La cabina de grabación la tienen allá. Bueno, toda la parte de MIDI, la planilla cuando están, la pantalla cuando están editando un programa de televisión. Oh, And then serio. back, you could see kind of. Let me see if I can pull this thing out without losing you here. A ver oh, si puedo sacar esto sin perderlos ustedes. So this is uh, inside Mirá the lo, studio. Esto es dentro del estudio. You know, so this is where oh, you do your vocals and you do. Uh, And I got a bunch of junk there that I got to clean up with another keyboard. And then, uh, oh, here. And then. Che, qué lindo estudio, ¿eh? Sí. Terrible, muy bueno. Muy bien, armado, much, sí. uh, This and this, and then you got over here. I'm not going to show you the back wall because it's not done yet. No les mostré la parte de atrás porque todavía no está terminada, pero bueno, ahí pueden ver una idea, tienen un poquito de, de lo que es el estudio. Thank wow, you, that's great. amazing. The magic happens. <laughs> yes. Yes, the magic eh, happens. Man. De, yes. Debe pasar muchas horas ahí adentro, me imagino. Uh, you spend a lot of hours there of your life, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, well, you know, I mean, just building this was, uh, I built it all myself. I, I did the, uh, all the construction, all the wiring, all the electrical. I built the baffles. I went and I took a, like a nine hour baffle course on just how, how to build baffles, you know? And I just, uh, I pretty much went over my son's studio and I said, okay, you, I know you spent a lot of money. I'm not spending that much. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I just kind of duplicated what they did over there, you know? So yeah, I always like doing that stuff, but yeah, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to build anything else now. You know, I'm, I'm like, this, it's time to build music, you know, again, but it was a good, it was a really good experience. It was good. Good for the head. Todo, todo yeah. el estudio, eh, bueno, justamente está diciendo, muy bueno, fue muy bueno para la cabeza. Lo construyó todo el mismo, con la construcción, cables, eh, sonido, todo lo armó él. Eh, dice, hasta hizo un curso para armar eh, baffles, que eh, lo armó para, para tenerlo todo de su forma correcta, si los armó él. Eh, dice, el hijo, el hijo, ah, gastaste mucho, si no, la verdad no lo gasté mucho, pero, pero lo hice todo yo y eso ayuda mucho a la mente. Es mi estudio y es hora de dejar de construir esto y empezar a, a escribir y, y, y tocar yeah. música. Es su, es su hijo más pequeño. Yeah, your, your youngest kid. That is your newest and youngest kid. What's that? Your music room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My youngest child. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know was, what? Uh, I have a question about the, about the music, actually. Uh, because I know that you did something for the Osborns. Sí, tengo una pregunta para vos. Porque sé que hiciste una pieza para el, para el show de los Osborns, the, the, the Ozzy Osborn. Yeah, uh, yeah, how, yeah. Yeah, you need to tell me that something was, about that, please. That was uh, my, it was my, you know, my son had the band, right? And uh, and so we wrote this song together, and uh, and then and they liked that song for the for the show, and they did that song on the show. That's pretty much it. He, Jason, you know, we uh, I forget how we produced it. I think <clears throat> I forget who produced it. I think he probably just went up. Because he took over my studio that I used to have upstairs. I had another building, like 1,600 square foot building, and he literally took it over. And I said, "All right, well, he's showing some talent. <laughs> I think I'll let him go." <laughs> and and he did pretty damn good, you know, you know. So, uh, but I think that's that's that song. Um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we wrote uh, we wrote that together. Yeah. Bueno, él nos cuenta, le pregunté justamente porque escribió la canción, una de las canciones de, de, ¿se acuerdan del reality show de los Osborne de Ozzy? Claro, sí, sí, sí. Eh, bueno, él escribió una de las canciones que pasaban en todos los shows y dice, bueno, en esa época mi hijo tenía una banda, así que escribimos la canción la canción juntos, no se acuerda quién la produjo pero les, 
le gustó mucho la canción y lo usaron para el show. Y dice, y lo usamos en el estudio de arriba, que era mi estudio, que eh, 1600 pies cuadrados, dice. Eh, algunos siquiera hacen claro. el cálculo para pasar los metros cuadrados. Eh, y dice, bueno, pero mi hijo ahorita tiene que ver qué buen productor que es ahora mismo, porque él se ocupó de ese, de ese estudio y a mí me quedó este ahora. Uh, I, I also remember sí, that. It was the band, that's what I remember. It was the band, it was the band that Jack found, okay? So Jack, you know, Jason and Jack were friends, uh, still are friends. I mean, you know, they, they uh, uh, at the time, you know, were friends. So Jack found the band and that's the band he found for the show. So that, that was the entree for the show. Ah, ok, ok. Bueno, Jack, eh, el hijo de Ozzy, dice que encuentra Ozzy, a esa banda. Sí, exacto. Y esa era, esa era la entrada de la canción, que ya que encuentra esa banda y le gusta la canción. Ahí fue como, como, como funcionó eso. Che, me gustó esa pregunta de Gastón Giuliani por ahí. Eh, creo que era Gastón, ¿no? Sí. Sí. So, now we're talking about music. Gastón here wants to know what was your, your solo band or favorite band that inspired you also to, to, to compose? Oh, Too many. <laughs> Too many. Uh, mucha, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, the Beatles obviously was, was one of my first biggest influences was, was the Beatles. There was uh, Rolling Stones. Um, I loved, uh, <clears throat> I loved, you know, the soul, like it, back then it was called, you know, soul music, right? I, I loved, I was really a big fan of, uh, you know, like Earth, Wind and Fire and, um, you know, Four Tops, all those guys, and and then I loved uh, I loved the Bee Gees too. By the way, I mean I, I love the Bee Gees. I thought they, you know, the music they were doing was incredible. Uh, and I loved uh, what's this? Um, she was great from Florida. What's her name? Ah, jeez, man, <laughs> you got in a bad car accident. Got bad bad car accident, but recovered. And you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea. No. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Estefan. Una, una oh. Gloria Estefan. Oh, uh, Gloria Estefan. Oh, yeah, yeah. very well known here. Yeah. Yeah. I love that whole, you know, sound. So I always tried to incorporate as a writer. I always tried to incorporate all these sounds that I loved into the mm. music. Not not always the commercial, most commercial, but uh, you know, because we, you know, when you're a writer, when you're music, when you write music, when you feel like a, I always felt like I was a writer, a music writer. As much as I like to perform, I got really into the music writing. So, you know, to find what artists are looking for is tough. And and a lot of artists, especially that in that of that time, they were writing great music. A lot of them were writing writing great music on their own. Um, and then there was a whole era of music that happened where people, everybody thought they could write a song, but they really couldn't, you know. And so you had a whole bunch of bad music. And then... Uh, And now it's kind of half and half. A lot of people write, and and but it used to be the Brill Building in in New York. People would go to the Brill Building, you know, like Ashford and Simpson, and and writers like that were writing great songs for people, you know, and uh, and so there was a structure in the music business that that was very successful, you know, in those days. There was a very successful structure of the music business, and then all of a sudden, I'm getting off the track a little bit, but I'm just thinking of the entire realm and the time span of music that i know so you could tell that, that that's what i like that that's the kind of music i i loved was uh, to answer your question really um was uh kind of soul music like you know r&b rock pop r&b that was my favorite place to be you know as a singer too so yeah yes. and cool. slow down the album slow down this the album slow down that i did reflects that because i wrote really in that kind of genre, you know. Good. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, bueno, ahí, ahí tenés la, la pedazo de respuesta que te dieron, Gastón. Eh, los Beatles fue su primera influencia, los Rolling Stones también siempre los amó. Dice, me tiro más para el lado de la música Soul, Earth and Wind and Fire, Four Tops. Dice, también amado los Bee Gees. Después se, se había olvidado el nombre de Gloria Estefan, pero Gloria Estefan también. Eh, dice, usted tiene que saber que como escritor trato de incorporar sonidos, no usualmente lo más comercial, pero cuando escribís música tratás de, de inspirarte y, y encontrar sonidos eh, diferentes. Siempre me consideré un escritor de música. Me gusta actuar, 
la música, pero siempre me considero un escritor. Be, pero es, a, veces, a veces es difícil encontrar, no se olvide que él vende canciones a otras personas, le escribe canciones a otras personas. Mm -hmm. Dice, a veces es difícil encontrar lo que los otros artistas quieren, eh, en especial artistas en otra época eh, que escribían bien, eh, y otros artistas que pensaron siempre que pues, sabían escribir música y podían escribir bien, la verdad no lo hacían, hacían muchas cosas malas. Por ejemplo, si vas para lo que es el Brill Building, eh, estaban Ashbury, Simpo, Ashbury, Ashbury Simpson, que escribían canciones geniales, había como una estru estructura exitosa armada en la industria musical. Y, bueno, la verdad me estoy descarriando con lo que te estoy diciendo, pero es para que vean el tiempo y lo ancho de, de, de que ocupa todo este estilo de música de mis estilos. Pero bueno, cayendo a lo final, eh, el estilo R&B, pop, eh, rhythm and Blues, o sea, el, el Soul. por ejemplo, mi álbum Slow Down, exacto. Eh, si escuchan mi álbum Slow Down, eh, que lo pueden escuchar en su página, pueden ver el estilo de, de música que le gusta, que le gusta mucho a Greg. Qué buena foto, se sí, mira ese traje. Eh. That me of, uh, Elvis is, uh, 1968 special, the comeback special. <laughs> yeah. Qué I like that foto. movie. Did you, see, did you see that Elvis movie? Did you see that new one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a very, very big Elvis fan. Been to Graceland. And yeah, oh, yeah I've seen the good goods and the bad of that movie. That was a great movie. I'm, I'm seeing a couple of Oscars there for sure for the kid wow. and, and the Colonel Parker, both of them. Yeah, sí, mira, definitely. Mira lo que es, eh? I had Colonel. Film. I'll tell you a thing. You, you mentioned Colonel Parker. When I was doing BJ and the Bear, I get a call. I'm in, I'm in the top of the dunes in Las Vegas. And we're filming there for a month. And uh, and I get a call, and it's Colonel Parker on the phone. And he goes, he says, is this Greg Evigan? I said, yeah. He goes, uh, this here's Colonel Parker. I said, oh, wow, okay. He goes, I'm going to make you a big star, boy. And I said, oh, yeah? All right, okay, well. Uh, and then he started going on. He was trying to sell me on, on himself. I'm going to take you. I'm going to do this for you. And, you know, he also mentioned he's going to take half the money and he's gonna, and then uh, and then uh, I just said, uh, bottom line, I ended it with um, after all of that, I ended it with, uh, well, I already have management and I'm already doing what I'm doing. I and I'm, I'm you know, I'm pretty happy with the people I'm with, you know, and uh, he's well, all right, boy, well, you're going to be missing out on that. And I and I said, all right, well, take care. Thanks for calling. And uh, and that was it with Colonel Parker. <laughs> You know, increíble. Talking about crazy stories like the Steve McQueen one. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> bueno, ahora que lo mencionaste, le dije a Greg, bueno, ahí en esa, en esa imagen te parece a Elvis cuando hizo el, el, el especial del 68, cuando volvió a tocar en, en escenarios, en esas fotos, y, y me dice, bueno, ¿te gustó la película? Y le digo, sí, bueno, me gustó un par de Oscars. Y me dice, bueno, ya que estás hablando de eso, en la época que hacía eh, BJ and the Bear, me suena el teléfono, estoy en una de las dunas de Las Vegas, estábamos filmando durante un mes ahí, y atiende, me llama si quiere hablar. Sí, habla el coronel Parker. Para el que no lo sabe, el coronel Parker era el que manejaba a Elvis, era el dueño de Elvis, básicamente. Y me dice, ¿vos sos Grevian? Sí, eh, soy el coronel Parker. Ok, bueno, quiero hacerte una estrella, quiero hacerte una estrella gigante. Eh, y bueno, y trataba de venderme una carrera, que yo más o menos ya tenía, eh, y entre todas las cosas que me trataba de vender, me dice, eh, lo que sí me voy a quedar con la mitad de tu plata. Y yo terminé diciendo, bueno, <risa> Tengo manager, estoy muy feliz con la gente que trabaja. Sincero, con... sincero. Y el coronel Parker, el coronel Parker le dijo, eh, bueno, pibe, vos te lo perdés. Chau. <risa> Tremendo. Hablando de las historias como la de Steve McQueen de Joana, Joana Castro. Claro, terrible historia. I don't think he did anything after that, honestly. I don't think, I think I made the right move. I don't think he did. I don't, I can't, I don't remember hearing anything more about Colonel Parker or doing anything for anybody. But, Dice, bueno, you know, from that, movie, that movie you saw if that movie portrayed him and from what I remember talked uh, uh, I could see you know he, I made the right move <laughs> that's all I could say yeah. eh, bueno, lo que te tengo que decir es que la verdad pienso que, que, lo, que elegí muy bien porque después de eso, mm -hmm. después de Elvis no hizo nada, no, hizo, no recuerdo que haya, haya hecho absolutamente nada así que me parece que tomé el camino correcto y lo que recuerdo yo de cuando me habló a mí y la actuación que se ve en la película dice totalmente estoy seguro que hice el, el que toma el camino correcto <risa> una buena elección de vida muy buena elección I didn't want to support his gambling problem you know what I mean <risa> no quería ayudar con su problema de juego <risa> Muy bueno. Sí, bueno, no sé si nos vamos buscando tiempo como estamos, pero yo, 
yo tengo una, una preguntita y después si quieren hacer una más cada uno y ya les parece si lo, lo dejamos. Dale. Just a few more questions, if you don't mind, Greg, and then we'll let you go. Sure, yeah, sure. Mine, the one that I personally have is I heard somewhere, and I want to say it in, in English first to see your face, okay. and then I'll ask it in Spanish for people to, to hear it. I heard that you rejected playing Michael Knight in Knight Rider. Please tell me something about that. <laughs> me dijeron que wow. rechazaste hacer del papel de Michael Knight en el auto fantástico. Por favor, decime que de verdad en esa yeah. historia. Well, you know, I was, I remember I had my newborn daughter, Vanessa, and I was swinging on the hammock outside in the front yard. And I just finished the show, you know, with Glenn Larson, BJ and the Bear. And, uh, and Glenn calls me. He says, hey, Greg. I got a show. I got a, I got another show that you're going to be great. You'd be great in this. I said, Oh yeah. What is it? You know, he says, um, he says, well, it's this guy. He's got this incredible car. You know, it's like, it's an amazing car. It does everything. And it, it, it listens to everything. It just dry. And, and so, and so I said, well, so what do you, you well, what do you do with the car? I mean, he says, well, you know, you talk to the car all the time and you tell the car, you know, what to do. I said, wait a minute. I've been talking to a chimp for all these years. <laughs> Now I have to talk to a car. <laughs> I said, I don't know, Glenn. I don't think so. You know, I, I don't really want to do, I want to move. I, see, I always had this other career in my mind for myself. You know what I mean? I, I always wanted to do, I love BJ and the bear. It was great. It was a great star. People love the show, but I always wanted to do like, you know, serious, serious acting, you know, that's, that's the way I, I, I saw myself. Although I didn't look like that guy, you know what I mean? I always had that young look, and so it didn't always work. I wasn't getting the De Niro parts, you know what I mean? But I always wanted those parts, and uh, and so I wanted to go after those parts. So it was a it was a slam dunk no for me, you know, on this. And I'm glad it happened because I, I would have never got my two dads. And my two dads gave me at least – it wasn't giving me what I wanted when it comes to the kind of parts that I saw myself playing, but it would gave me a chance to do comedy which was completely different than what I've done before that. So as an actor, that expanded my, uh, you know, repertoire, so to speak. You know? And uh, so it was good in that way. But, hey, I was, I was happy for – because, I, you know, I knew him then, so uh, I was happy for him. I know he came off a soap opera and everything, so he was, he was happy with the part, and, and he did well at it. And so, yeah. Everybody's got a story like that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah totally, 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 yeah. totally. And, and, and that, to be honest with you, I don't know if, how good it would have been because you already did that. Like you said, it. yeah, you were in a vehicle talking to some someone that, you know, right. it, it was the same thing. Town to town I love helping the someone. Be... I love the chimp. Don't get me wrong. He came to my wedding. So. Oh, my God. <risa> That, I, need, I didn't know, ok yeah, che, yeah. bueno, eh, dice bueno, después de que terminó de hacer BJ dice, tenía a mi hija recién nacida la, la tenía en el columpio, en el, en el jardín adelante de mi casa, me llaman por teléfono eh, Glenn Nanson y me dice, tengo otro show este va a ser genial, va a ser un éxito es de este tipo, que tiene un auto increíble que hace de todo, eh, escucha lo que le decís, y hace y te obedece y dice, ¿para qué, qué hace? habla con el auto y le dice al auto lo que tiene que hacer, dice, para, 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 yo estuve hablando con un mono, eh, con un chimpancé, por todos estos años, ahora tengo que hablar con el auto, mm, no, no me parece, no, no quiero hacer eso. Eh, dice, yo tenía un, honestamente otra carrera en mente, eh, no me malinterpretes, BJ fue un gran comienzo, lo amé, pero siempre decía, quería hacer actuación verdadera, quería ser un actor serio, aunque no daba el físico, siempre el, el pibe jovencito, no me daban las partes como para De Niro. Eh, pero bueno, fue un no rotundo eh, rechacé hacer auto fantástico por completo, pero lo bueno es que al rechazarlo consiguió My Two Dads, mis dos papás mm. y se me dio la oportunidad de hacer comedia así como actor, expandió su repertorio y bueno, fue muy bueno, también fueron tres años de, de, de mis dos papás y dice, bueno, fue muy feliz por haber tomado esa decisión y a su vez conocía a David Hasselhoff eh, que acaba de salir de hacer novelas y que estaba muy feliz cuando no consiguió el papel y le fue muy bien, así que nada, dice, bueno, todos los actores tenemos, tenemos eh, este tipo de historias, ¿no? Que rechazamos un papel que termina siendo así grande, y me dice, no me lo interpretes, yo amaba el chimpancé, hasta vino a mi boda, 
<risa> me mato con eso. Pero aparte era eh, hacer repetir de nuevo todo, todo lo mismo. Estar en la ruta, en un vehículo, hablar con alguien, horas y horas de grabación, manejando. Yeah. Buena elección. Lo mismo. Muy buena elección. Yes, great, great choice, great choice. Eh, bueno, ¿quieres hacer una preguntita, muchachos? Yo una sola, eh, nada, más que una preguntita, es un, es un saludo, porque me pidieron acá de, eh, si le puedo mandar un saludo a, a Paola, que lo está mirando ahora, que es fanática de él desde chica, enamoradísima, y nada, es un pedido especial ahí que nos mandaron uno de los chicos de, del grupo de última Ida. Una de las primeras que se conectó para esperar la transmisión, Paola. Sí, 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 sí. Okay. Uh, there is a lady named Paola who actually sent a message. She has been waiting before our show. She's the first one, and she she doesn't have a question. She just wants to see if you can just say hi to her. Paola is her name, if you don't Paola? mind. Paola. Paola. How are you? <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. Paola, eso guardalo. Hola. Está. Chelito, Charlie. Sí, sí, eh, no, no estaba viendo a ver si había, si había alguna otra pregunta de las que, de las que teníamos. Mira, y... básicamente, Gus, lo que mucha gente habla también quiere preguntar acerca de si conoce algo de nuestro país. ¿Va? Hay varias preguntas con respecto a eso. Eh, algunas que preguntan si sabía el fenómeno que causó BJK. Y después también mucha gente pregunta para el tema de la música, si conoce algo de la música y demás. No sé cómo la querés. Sí, sí, se la hace la plantea así. Ok, ver, so this is, this is a general question that we're getting a lot uh, from the audience right now. It's uh, how well you knew about how big you were down here in Argentina. That is part, part of it, BJ, how big it was and you playing BJ down here in Argentina. And the second part, and there are several questions about the same thing, is about if you knew anything about our, or you know anything about Argentinian music as, as a musician. No, I, I wish I knew more. I, I, I did an interview um, and I sang a song. Um, I remember I sang the song Change that I wrote, a song called Change. And, uh, and I did it on a show, but I couldn't tell you at this point because I never heard from it again. I just did the show. It was a, like a podcast, like a, what we're doing now, something like that. And... Uh, But no, I, I don't know. I just know that the show was popular in so many places. I had, I remember looking at a list they sent me, you know, of, uh, it's like the BMI list, you know, because uh, I'm a BMI writer. So, so you get the list and you see the names on the list of, uh, of how many places around the world that, that it, the show was. And it blew my mind. I mean, you know, it blew my mind when I saw the list that how, you know, how it was covered, how it went around the world. So, It was great. You know, I, I, I know I went to Australia one time uh, for the Logie Awards there. And I went to, uh, I did a show in Venezuela years. I went there twice to do, uh, uh, what was the name of the show? It runs for six hours every day. <laughs> Whenever they put it on, it runs for six hours. So I did that show. And uh, yeah, I went to a few places where I was able to, uh, you know, that the show made me popular in. But I had no idea. No, I, and, I, and I don't know exactly what, what music uh, uh, you love the best in, Ar in Argentina, but I like, tell me, will you? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a full list of music so you can yeah, listen okay, to it. Good. good. Uh, yeah. Uh, dice, no, dice, la verdad, no, disculpame, ojalá supiera. Eh, eh, sé que me entrevistaron un, de un canal de Argentina que no se acuerda el nombre y yo, si no recuerdo, lo he visto. Eh, era un bueno, no me acuerdo el programa, pero ya lo, lo voy a buscar. Eh, rescate dice, emotivo. Rescate emotivo. Ahí está. That is the name yeah. of the show. Rescate emotivo. Emotional rescue in Argentina. The one that you did. Oh, you okay. okay. All right, good. Eh, eh, y dice que cantó una canción para, para ese programa. Nunca lo vio. Eh, la canción Change que, que escribió él. Eh, y dice, bueno, no, no nunca lo vi. Eh, era una especie de podcast o algo así, era exactamente así, ahora lo recuerdo. Él estaba con, sus, con su equipo de música atrás. Dice, una vez me impresionó mucho, teníamos una lista tipo VMA donde veíamos los países donde salía el, el show nuestro. Dice que se sorprendió cuando vio la lista 
donde, donde daban viejo en todos los países, no podía creer la cantidad de países donde estaba. Mm. Dice, fui a Australia a hacer un show, fui a Venezuela a hacer un show, fui dos veces a Venezuela a un show que dice, está, cada vez que está, son dura seis horas. El, eh, así que no, el no, no. Fantástico. I just remembered it. El Fantástico. That's what it was. El Fantástico. Ah, me suena. Me suena, fantástico. sí. Yeah, it rings a bell. Yeah. It rings a bell. Yeah. Eh, eh, y dice, bueno, fui a muchos lugares. Eh, y dice, discúlpeme, pero no conozco música argentina, no sé qué estilo de música le gusta. Y le dije, bueno, después te voy a mandar una lista de canciones. Y me dice, encantado de escucharla. Así que, muchachos, después armamos una lista y le mandamos sobre nuestro gusto. Ahí está. De música. Ahí está. En, el grupo de WhatsApp, en el grupo de WhatsApp armamos la lista entre todos y se la enviamos. Exacto. Lo agregamos agrega, al grupo de WhatsApp. <risa> <risa> es bueno. Es. <risa> Eh, bueno, muchachos, si les parece algo más o lo dejamos ir a Greg, como a ustedes les parezca, díganme. Oh, demasiado, demasiado se ha extendido, así que le agradecemos sí, sí, ya sí, sí. todo yeah. el tiempo que, yeah, we've, que we've, we've been 45 minutes over the time, so we're going to let you go now, Greg. Uh, right. We have a little something for you. One of the... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a little gift for you. Uh, again, it's nothing, but it's just one from one of the artists that, that listens to the show. Actually, he had some questions in, in here, too. And he made something, a little something for you that we're going to show you right now. And we're going to send it to you, of course. Uh, Charlie, cuando quiera mostrarlo. His name is great. Gonzalo Facio. Uh, here I go. go. I think. ¿Tienes vos, Charlie? ¿Más vos? Sí, 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 sí. sí. Ahí. Ahí va a ser. Ahí voy ya. Ahí va. Uh-oh. Ta-da-da. ta da da <laughs> Oh, nice. Hey, look at this. DJ in the <laughs> Mira wow. qué bueno que está, eh. That's a, that's a crazy chip. Local, chip. local, local chip. <laughs> chip <on silo. laughs> hey, that, that's pretty good for a shirt. Wow. Yeah, sí, para, para, muy para, para una remera. Yeah, look at that. Sí, muy bueno para una remera. That's the first hey, time you see it. So this is... that's si quieres, podemos, podemos darle una versión con el mono borrado, no hay problema. Claro. And if you like, we can give you another person without the monkey. <laughs> the microphone Only you on the truck. <laughs> we put that bueno, together. Chico. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Uh, muchas gracias, <laughs> Chicos, bueno, los despedimos con un abrazo uh, y un aplauso a Greg, les parece. Greg, thank you very Totalmente. much. We thank you. loved you. We love you and we'll keep on loving thank you. Thank you. And we wish you all the best. In in your future career and we'll be there to to monitor it and share it and maybe even bring you to argentina to play down here oh man i would love that that would be great man seriously i would love that there you go Move yeah we're, we're working on putting together uh uh something like quasi convention with several artists and uh, you will be on the list for sure <laughs> Así oh, great. Te invitamos a que vengas a tocar cuando hagamos la convención nuestra acá. Y dices, bueno, sí, me encantaría. Sí, es genial. Ahí está. Aquí está. Aquí está. El country es beautiful. El countryside y todo. Beautiful. Es lo que escucho. Yeah. Yes. Music, food. Uh, well, you're a married man, so women is part of it, but that, that doesn't count in this case. <laughs> and, uh, but yes, music, sides, yeah. and uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Greg, great. thank you so much. We love you. Thank, thank you so you. much for doing this. Thanks a lot, Greg. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. All right. Thank you, Wanda. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Che, eh, qué lindo. Che, loco, hablamos con BJ, loco. Se dieron cuenta, ¿no? Increíble. <laughs> New <laughs> dreams and better scenes. Toda la hora. Me encanta que es un tipo normal. Es un tipo normal, 100% normal. Bueno, no, creo que lo tenemos bastante como en un, este, una tendencia, ¿no? De los actores que invitamos y productores y escritores, que son eh, gente normal. Eh, que, uh -huh. que, 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 no sé, lo, 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 me gustó mucho, me gustó mucho. Así que bueno, uh -huh. realmente. Totalmente. El, el laburo de Gonza, una hermosura. Eh, así que nada, como dije, una Qué remera, bueno. pero bueno, ya le vamos a enviar una, una copia. Sí. Muy bueno, Muchachos, eso, gracias por acompañarnos esta noche. Gracias. Salud, gracias. Saludos a Pelu. Saludos a Pelu que se le cayó ahí la conexión. Claro, así, la que... Claro. así que bueno, nada. Gracias, gente, por acompañarnos como todos los jueves. Gracias por participar, por todas las preguntas. Bueno, no pudimos hacer todas porque, bueno, por falta de tiempo, pero nada. Muchas gracias por, 
por participar, amigos. Sí, compañía, bueno. pero, qué más, pero qué más que haberlo dejado de J que se explaye y que nos cuente claro. muchísimas cosas que, que involucraron muchas de las preguntas también. Así que está bueno sí, sí, sí. Eh, tener la posibilidad de que, de que nos cuente él directamente. Así que, Así que bueno, buenísimo. nos vemos el jueves que viene, amigos. Muy bien. El jueves que viene con otro invitado. Adiós. En unos días mandamos la lista. <risa> Un abrazo vale. para todos. Chao, chao. Muy bien. Adiós.